Hi, and welcome back to the Batty.com channel. My name is Brian Thompson, and about 20 years ago, I founded the website Batty.com, where you can find free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. Today, we're going to restore this 1990 through 1996 Digital Information Center. Features that we're going to address would be the photo cell, the electrical switches behind these buttons, and the light bulbs which light up the telltale lights. To do that, we're going to use the 1990 through 1996 Corvette DIC restoration kit, and that's from Batty.com. We're going to take a Torx 15 screwdriver and remove the four screws on the front. We'll remove the Torx 15 screw on the back. Next, we'll gently disconnect the electrical connector on the back side of the board by pulling up. And the switch panel will drop free. Next, we're going to use a small flat blade screwdriver to remove the two bulbs. We'll rotate each about 1 16th of a turn counterclockwise and lift it away from the housing. Next, we're gonna use a small Phillips screwdriver to remove the six screws on the back side of the switch panel. Once those screws are removed, we'll gently lift the back panel and set it aside. Here we see the buttons. Here we see the circuit boards where the photo cell is located and where the six switches that we'll be replacing are located. We're going to use a small flat blade screwdriver. Gently bend the plastic catch to the side and lift the circuit board away. We will manipulate the wire out of this channel. Next to release the bottom circuit board, we'll slide the catch to the side. There's another catch here on the left. There's another catch at the bottom, and the circuit board lifts away from the plastic. So here we see the six switches we'll be replacing. It's common for the springs inside these switches to fail, which can result in the switch sticking down. It's also more and more common that we see the switches fail to make contact when they're pressed. Uh, they'll result in a uh, very high resistance instead of a low resistance. That tricks the body control computer into thinking that a different button was pressed or that no button was pressed. So we'll replace the switches. While it's apart, we'll replace the photo cell. It's fairly common for these to fade in the sunlight. The photo cell is responsible for the dash lights dimming at night. It's very common for these photo cells to fade and stop responding the way they should. So we'll replace the photo cell while it's apart. To remove the photo cell and the housing from the circuit board, we'll apply heat to both terminals and the component will fall free. Next, use your favorite method of solder removal to remove the solder from the holes. In this case, we're going to use a vacuum solder removal tool. These are very efficient and they're fairly cheap. If you don't have one, you can go to batty.com and click on parts. We'll apply heat. 
We'll vacuum the solder out of the hole. We'll go to the next hole. The restoration kit includes a photo cell, but we'll need to reuse the plastic housing around this photo cell. To do that, we'll trim the glue around the edge of that photo cell. We're just using an X-Acto knife. When the glue has been removed, we'll press the photo cell out using a pair of pliers. The kit includes this new photo cell. We'll separate the leads like we see here. We'll install the photo cell in the housing. We'll make sure that we have one lead in each of the two holes. And the reason for that is that we don't want those leads to short. Next, we'll install the photo cell into the circuit board, again with one, again with one lead through each hole. We'll pull it through the back side of the circuit board, and we'll bend those leads apart to hold the component in place while we solder it. To solder the photo cell, we'll apply heat to the junction between the lead of the photo cell and the pad on the board. We'll feed in a small amount of fresh solder that's included with the kit, and we'll release the heat. We'll do the same thing with the other contact. We'll apply heat at the junction between the pin of the photo cell and the pad on the circuit board. We'll feed in a small amount of fresh solder. We'll remove the heat. And finally, in order to prevent shorting, we'll use some wire cutters and we'll trim the leads on the photo cell. We'll use our vacuum solder removal tool to remove the solder one leg at a time. To do that, we heat the joint. We feed in a small amount of fresh solder, which adds some rosin to clean the joint. We'll vacuum away the solder. When the solder has been removed, the component can be pulled free. We'll repeat that with the next five switches. The kit comes with six new switches, which we'll install in the circuit board. They have pre-bent leads to hold themselves in place. Okay, we'll note that we've got five switches where the leads are off to the sides and one of the switches is installed such that the leads are up and down. That would be this switch here. Next we'll take some fresh solder and solder those switches in place. We'll apply heat to the junction between the pad and the pin of the switch. We'll feed in a small amount of fresh solder. And then we'll remove the heat. We'll do that for each of the other four legs. And we'll do that for each of the other five switches. When all those switches have been soldered, we'll examine our work to make sure we didn't forget anything, make sure we didn't cause any circuit bridges. Here's what it looks like just after soldering. We still have a little bit of flux residue on the board and we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol and a nylon brush to take care of that. We'll apply a liberal coat of alcohol to the back side of the board. And we'll use some compressed air.
to dry off the board. We'll do the same thing with the photo cell board. And here's what it looks like after the cleaning. To reinstall the circuit board into this plastic tray, we'll align it with the bottom. We'll make sure that each of the five pins on the back side of here has poked through a hole. And then we'll press it into place. We'll clip the bottom first, then the top and the two sides. Okay. All right. Next, we'll manipulate that wire back into the channel. We'll hook the left edge of the photocell circuit board and then we'll press the right edge into place. We'll make sure that that's secure and that the wire is still in the channel. And it is. Next, we'll clean up the button assembly. We're going to use some compressed air. If yours has seen a liquid spill, you might want to take this apart and do a more, more thorough cleaning. But ours is in great shape. And so we're going to put it back together this way. We'll align the plastic tray with the six holes in the back. We'll reinstall those six screws. We'll note there are a couple of holes here at the top where that screw could have gone. Uh, it does not go in the hole in the center. It goes in the hole in the left and the right. When we finish reassembling this, we'll make sure that the photo cell is lined up in the clear window here. We'll make sure that each of the buttons works freely, and it does. Next, we need to replace the light bulbs. These are also included with the kit. The kit includes two envelopes, one marked brown. This is a bulb for this specific brown base. And it will go, it will go back into the socket marked brown. So it's written right here. It includes a gray bulb meant for this base and that will install in this socket here. We'll work on these one at a time to keep from mixing things up. In order to get the old bulb out, we'll use an X-Acto knife and we'll lift that wire and straighten it out. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Once those two wires have been straightened out, we'll pull the bulb free and set it aside. We'll separate the wires of the new bulb the way we see here. We'll install the new bulb such that one wire goes through each of the two holes. We don't want them to touch or to short. We'll verify that by looking at the back of the light bulb. Okay. All right. To install the new bulb, I'll bend the new wires sideways into the grooves of the light bulb base. Then I'll turn it around and going counterclockwise, I'll wind the new lead around the grooves in the socket. I'll do the same thing with the other side. We'll wind that lead counterclockwise around the post on the side of this light bulb on the side of this base. Making sure that the making sure that the lead stays in the grooves on the base. We'll trim it flush with the outside edge. We'll take our X-Acto knife and make sure that wire follows the groove. This is what it should look like when we're done. With the two, with the two silver bars, one on either side of the bulb. We'll do the same thing off camera for the gray bulb. 
To reinstall the new bulbs, we'll place the brown bulb in the top hole marked brown. We'll use a small flat blade screwdriver to rotate it approximately 1 16th of a turn clockwise to lock it in place. We'll repeat that with the gray bulb on the bottom. We'll install the bulb in the hole. We will We will use a small flat blade screwdriver to turn the base approximately 1 16th of a turn clockwise to lock it in place. Before we start replacing these bulbs, it's a good idea to either make a note of which holes had bulbs installed and which don't, or to take a picture with your phone so that you have something to refer to. All right, the kit includes these new bulbs. We're going to go ahead and replace them just to make sure everything's working the way it should when we finish with this repair. We'll turn the bulbs about a sixteenth of a turn counterclockwise. And we'll lift them out. We want to be very gentle with these because they are riding against this flex circuit board stuff. And it's fairly easy to tear this if we're not careful. And we'll install the new bulbs. Again, we're going to be very gentle with this. We're going to press them into the socket. We'll rotate them about a sixteenth of a turn clockwise. We're going to make sure we put a bulb everywhere there was before. Go ahead and refer to the photo that we had you take earlier. We now have all the bulbs in place. It's very important that we make sure when we install these bulbs that the new metal ears of the socket stay outside of the hole. In other words, that they rest against this circuit board. We know that this has happened when we can see the ear on either side of the socket. When they're all right, this is how it looks. We're going to go ahead and clean the telltale panel at this point. We're going to spray some Windex on the surface of it and wipe it with a clean dry paper towel. We'll also wipe the dirt out of this frame. Next we'll reinstall the switch panel. We'll rest that in place. And we'll reinstall the frame around the telltale bulbs. We'll reinstall the torque screw on the back side of the panel. And we'll reconnect the plastic circuit board connector to the switch panel. And that completes the repairs to our 1990 through 1996 trip monitor slash digital information center. My name is Brian Thompson and I founded the website Betty.com where you can find more free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. You can also find the parts and tools you see us using in the videos. Thanks to your support, I'm proud to say that 10 Americans have jobs. Hi friends, 20 years of experience can make these repairs look easier than they really are. But don't worry, we have your back. If you're not getting the results you see here, then stop and pack it up and send it to us. We have the parts, the tools, and the experience needed to do the job right.